I'm going to attempt to do this without crying and hope that I can. Um, I apologize for the noise. I have uh, the one puppy in her crate because I'm painting the ceiling and um, I don't want her walking in my tray of paint, so which happens to be on the floor. One second. Okay, the wind is picking up, and so there is a storm coming here, but that's beside the point. So, I don't know if I ever put this out there on this channel. The Message of Love channel, I was inspired to begin uh, for my children. At least, Okay, that is how my mind justified beginning this YouTube series was so that someday if my children had questions and I was no longer embodied to answer them, perhaps they would find these teachings, these life lessons that I have experienced and what I have learned from them. And that it would aid them um, and particularly for my daughter so this message is for my daughter and for any of you who watch this who are not my human daughter in this physical form um, my daughter stopped speaking to me um, a couple years ago when my grandmother passed away. I lost the relationship with my daughter because I spoke my truth. Um, when my grandmother passed away, well, while she was in the hospital uh, making the transition out of the body, I had a rather profound experience of receiving communication from her um, which is not something that is accepted in my human family. So this in no way and by no means do I consider myself a medium. Um, I receive messages from spirit, what I call spirit or the angelics or my higher self or things like that. Um, I receive messages and information and downloads of sorts from entities or beings that are, well, we are multidimensional too, but not necessarily embodied on this earth plane. Okay, that's all. So, at the time my grandmother was going through this transition, she told me things and then um, after her passing or leaving the body, she asked me to share those things at her, at her funeral services. Um, I tried to get out of it. I really did. I tried to get out of it. I, I kept saying, you know, Graham, I'm not feeling this. And, I, you know, it's, I'm going to stand up there and say these things in front of my family and they're gonna think I'm crazy they're gonna think I'm nuts because I hadn't shared uh, my my spiritual journey with them to that degree and I just believed uh, my words would not be received well um, this proved to be the case however However, I tried to get out of it, and I said, you know, if you really want me to do this, you're going to have to give me a sign. I know you asked me to share this. Can I just share it with my brother, my human brother? And so I shared it with my human brother. My human brother was not going to attend her services because he feared um, confrontation with another who might come to the services, and he did not want to be in that confrontation. So... 
I said, okay, well, if you're not going, I don't want to go because I don't feel like I have any support there to get up and say what I've been asked to say. So I'm just going to read it to you. <laughs> so I read it to my brother and he was very accepting and very encouraging and very loving and compassionate about it. And he said it was beautiful and I shouldn't feel um, insecure or afraid. I shouldn't feel whatever about fearful about sharing that information. I'm sorry, just one second. But I said, well, I was asked to share it and maybe sharing it with you is enough. <laughs> so we, when we got off the phone, when we got off the phone, I, sorry, one second. Okay, so when he and I had finished our conversation, I got off the phone and I said a prayer to my grandmother. I said, listen, Graham, I shared this information with Tim and I hope it's enough because I really don't feel like I have the courage to stand up and say these things in front of my whole family. Now, I can say these things in front of those who are less familiar in the human form. Like I could stand up on a stage and share my experiences more easily than I was able to stand up in front of my own family and do this. So anyway, I said this prayer and I went to bed. But I did say, I did say before I finished, I said, listen, if this is not enough and you really, really, really <laughs> want me to go <clears throat> do this thing, I need a sign. <clears throat> like, I need a big sign. Something enormous. Because without Tim being there, there's just no way that I can do this. <laughs> so I went to bed. Turned it over to her. Turned it over to spirit. Turned it over to God. And I went to bed. And I woke up in the morning, and it was, I think it was rather late when I went to bed, probably was, and so I had slept in, I think I'd slept late, maybe 10 o'clock, something like that, and I, I got up in the morning, got some coffee, was doing my morning thing, and I just happened to check my phone, and I don't always check my phone, I don't live on it, um, unless I'm interested in looking something up or researching something or I get a phone call or a text message that I recognize from someone I recognize. I don't, don't do a lot with the phone. Um, and I checked my phone and there was a message from my brother that said he changed his mind. He was now going to the services and he hoped to see me there. <laughs> and I looked at the time and I had a few minutes to get ready and I had to drive an hour to get to the services and I had just enough time just enough time to get there so It was undeniable to me that this was the sign that I had asked for. This was the sign that I had asked for. And so I did go to the services, which if it hadn't been for the conversation with my brother, I wouldn't, uh, anyway, I was, I was not even informed of when the services were going to be. I, I happened upon it. Um, and a part of me felt like I was being intentionally excluded because I had already implied, I had already, yeah, I had already said something to a family member who was in charge of everything 
that my grandmother had given me a message and I was going to be delivering it at the services. And then, then coincidentally, which I, I of course don't believe in coincidences, I was never informed of when the services were going to be. Um, I found out by reading a Facebook post <laughs> when the services were going to be. And that was what prompted my call to my brother because I said, oh my gosh, I just saw the Graham services are tomorrow. I just saw it because I read a comment on Facebook. Not because I received an invitation to attend. Not because none of that. None of that. But because I saw a comment um, to a family member from a family member who lived out of town. And that message said, I'm so sorry for your loss. I'll, we'll see you tomorrow. And I was like, What's, we'll see you tomorrow. So I started digging on Facebook to see what the significance of tomorrow was. And that's how I found out when my grandmother's services were being held that I had already agreed to take pictures of her with my children to these services, but I was never told. Uh, so I kind of felt like I was being intentionally excluded, which was why I was as apprehensive, was as reluctant to appear and do this as I was. So anyway, sorry, I digress. I got the message from my brother that he was attending and hoped to see me there, and I rushed to get ready and drove the 45 minutes to an hour to get there. And when the services were through, we, any of us who wanted to stand up and say anything, we were invited to stand up. And the panic I felt, the I mean, it was, it was absolutely unreal. It was unreal because I knew I was going to do it. No matter what, I was going to do it. But at the same time, my ego was saying, you're going to die. You're going to die if you do this. Your, your, your world is going to come crashing down. You are going to absolutely be annihilated if you do this. So... You know, when it was my turn, I got up and started my spiel, and I was interrupted about three quarters of the way through, um, because, you know, <laughs> the comment, the, the interrupting comment was, was, um, hurry up, Missy, we don't have all day. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. So, anyway... Um, I finished, I finished <laughs> the message I had to deliver, but I honestly can't tell you what it sounded like. I don't know. I don't know what it sounded like because my, my, my essence left the body in a sense. I was out of body. I was seeing the room from three different positions. I was seeing me at the, at this podium type thing. Um, pulpit, whatever it is. And I was there and I could see, it was like I was behind myself. I could see the family all sitting and there were a lot of people there. This whole room was filled with, with folding chairs and people that I knew, you know, my whole life, uh, closely and some extended family and on and on. And, um, the, the funeral home, it was, it was packed. And I, I could see them. I could see me and, and realizing I was not in the body, but I was somewhere else observing all of it, all of it. And I have no idea if I read it correctly. I have no, I have no idea. I don't know. I don't know how it even went. <laughs> I know that I had the information in front of me. I had typed it and printed it out. But I have no idea. Once, once I was interrupted with those comments, I have no idea what was said after that.
because I feel like um, the aspect of me, the ask, sorry, I just got a text message and had to look at it. The aspect of me that um, was in the body reading left, like left the body. That aspect of me was like, this is too much. This is too much. I can't handle the pressure. I can't handle the pressure. I'm out. I'm leaving. I can't handle feeling the um, uh, disapproval, rejection of those listening to me. You know, um, so I don't know how it went. So I hope, I hope it was good. I don't know. Cause again, I don't know when it was finished. My mother did say, thank you. Now this is interesting. Okay. My mother did say, thank you. Now what's, what's amazingly ironic about this is my daughter no longer speaks to me because I told her what my grandmother had shared with me while she was transitioning out of the body. Not with her mouth, not with her human voice, but she had communicated these things to me very, very clearly, very profoundly. And I even verified the information with a family member to make sure that what I was receiving was from her and was true. Hmm. So I tried to tell my daughter, I did tell her what my grandmother had communicated to me and my, my daughter rejected, rejected the information, rejected m me, rejected. This is not necessarily surprising because my daughter was always uh, rebellious against anything of spirit. And the more I tried or encouraged or the more I tried to involve her in things of spirit, the more rebellious and abhorrent it became to her. Um, so she stopped speaking to me. Now, when I finished giving the message that my grandmother had asked me to give, at her services, my mother said, thank you. No one else spoke to me as I returned to my seat. But my mother said, thank you. Now, I don't have an open relationship with my own mother because my mother made choices that I could not align to in this human form. And I love my mother. I am so very grateful that she provided me with this body, that, that she entered into these agreements with me because it was obviously necessary. Um, but I don't, I don't have a relationship with my mother like, like most mothers and daughters do. And now I find, here I am, ironically, that my daughter no longer speaks to me. So... It is what it is. But the way I justified as, as I received the message that I was supposed to teach, teach the message of Christ to the best of my ability through my interpretation or spirit's interpretation. But again, I am in a human form and I am subject to the, the lens of information. So I have my own lens through which I see and everything is interpreted by that lens. And I have explained that in other videos. And so, you know, I, I listen and I communicate it to the best of my ability. Does that mean I get it right all of the time? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know.
It means that I see one vision, one version, one aspect of a message of information. Maybe I see two or three. I can usually say, see different layers of the onion and how all of them are true depending on your vantage point. And I can, I do have that ability. I've been gifted that in a sense. Um, but this message was intended for my daughter. My son has gone off to camp where I live in human form. Our school district does this fifth grade camp. And so during fifth grade camp, they go off to camp and... It's usually like Monday through Friday, uh, or I guess in years gone by, now this is many years ago, it was like Monday through Saturday, but things have changed since COVID and everything, you know, the, the COVID thing. So everything's different, but he is currently away at camp and it reminds me, I'm, I'm having experiences of you know, he spends a lot of time in his room watching old movies. I, I have some DVDs. We don't do TV anymore, television, so we don't have television anymore. Excuse me one second. Thank you for your patience. So we don't have television anymore because, oh, multiple reasons, but we just don't have television. So my my son watches some old um, DVDs that were mine, that are mine. Um, I have some movies that I loved, like musicals. You know, I have Grease 1 and 2. I have um, <laughs> Van Helsing. You know, the, the critics hated that movie. I loved it. Just, just stuff like that. Um, and so he spends a lot of time watching these DVDs and playing video games. There are some video games that he plays on the Switch. Um, we've gotten, you know, there's, we get away from the violence and stuff like that as much as we can, but even the Switch, you know, it, it's, it's still, <laughs> it still is what it is. So he spends a lot of time in his room, and my daughter did as well. Um, my daughter was 14 when my son was born, and um, she spent a lot of time in her room. And I figured it was because she didn't want to deal with the baby, and you know, she was pretty much an only child for most of her life, and she didn't really have a whole lot of interest in. Um, the baby stuff, tractor going up the road, <laughs> the baby stuff. So, um, she spent a lot of time in her room, but it may also have been because we didn't have a lot in common. Um, she liked video games. I, I don't, I don't do any of that. Um, I mean, I don't even watch television anymore. So, with him being away at camp, it's, I'm experiencing human emotions, human concerns that take me back to when my daughter was still in school, in, in like middle school, high school, and the feelings that I had when she wanted to do things or, you know, the, the mom worries keep trying to come in. And I just, it's just amazing to me that how, how these things come up and, and then, you know, I remind myself that these children are on their own journey. It is their own path. It is their own experience. So I, I always said, and 
B, if you're listening, if you ever listen to this, one time you asked me what I thought you would be when you grow up. What did I think you were going to be in the world? Like, what career did I think you'd have? What, any of that. And I just looked at you and I said, I had no idea what you would be. I had no idea who you would be. I had no idea. And I felt like you got mad at me because you said your friends' parents had their whole lives planned for them. They knew what college they wanted their children to go to. They knew the path they wanted their children to walk. And your path was never mine to walk. Your path was never mine to walk. It was always yours. The way I view you and your brother is I was entrusted to protect you, to provide for you the things that you need, to support you and guide you to the best of my ability. But that ultimately the choices have always been yours. Because that is the truth. And because your brother is away at camp all these years later, I'm reminded of the times when I was tempted to take more control or to inject myself or intercede or or attempt to influence you and your choices. But I know that, that I didn't on very many occasions do that at all. I didn't on many occasions do that at all. I could have, I could have done everything in my power to restrict your relationship with your father because of situations and circumstances. Um... And I did not do that because I knew how important your relationship was, that you needed that relationship. Now, you may someday come to understand that there is an aspect of you and probably an aspect of me and another reality where I did take more control, where I was more restrictive, where I pressed the issues and fought that fight and kept you from him. But that was not this experience. In this experience, with the experiences that I have assumed in this lifetime, my impression and interpretation and inspiration was that no matter how hard it was for me, no matter how concerned I was when you would go with him for weekends, no matter how fearful I was, because I would not be there to temper whatever occurred, because I would not be there to get in the way if it needed to happen. I would not be there to I 
I would not be there to be the light if there were times of darkness. But it was impressed upon me that in this experience, your relationship with him was much more important and that I needed to let go and let you have that experience. Now, you may not remember this, there was a time when you cried to me because of a circumstance. Um, he was living with someone who you felt was treating you badly and was being mean to you. And you cried to me and I said, why didn't you tell your daddy? And you said to me, mom, I don't want to make waves. I don't want to make waves. You said other things, but in case he would ever listen to this, I'm not going to say that. So, because this has to be public, so you can find it someday. Because I said to you, I said, surely if you told your dad that this was happening, he would see to it that you would be safe, that you would feel safe, and you would feel protected. But you told me you didn't want to make waves. So I did. So I reached out to him and I told him what was happening. And he said, well, why didn't she tell me? And I said, she didn't feel comfortable telling you. She didn't want to make problems. Okay. And he said that he would make an arrangement and adjustment that you would not be in this person's company anymore. When he came to pick you up the next time, I asked him, and I had tried, I had communicated, I had attempted to communicate with him before he came to pick you up, and I got no response. When he came to the door to pick you up, I told you to stay upstairs, I needed to talk with him first. And I asked him if he had made arrangements and what he had planned to do with you and where he had planned to take you for that weekend. And he got angry with me. Okay. He got angry with me and made threats towards me. And I said, well, you can't take her. If, if you haven't resolved this situation, or I said, if you can promise me that you're going to stay with her, meaning you, if he was going to stay with you or keep you with him and not, not leave you in the care of this other person, if he could assure me he was not going to leave you in the care of this other person and be away from you, then I said, if you can assure me that you will do that, I'll, then she can go. And he said, no, I can't. And, and, you know, and more. And that I had to allow him to take you. And I said, no. No, I don't. My job is to protect her. And he threatened to have me arrested. <laughs> and I said, well, go right ahead. Then you go ahead. And when the police get here, I'm going to tell them why I'm not allowing her to leave with you. And so that weekend he left and he did not have you with him when he left. I kept you home. And I told him that once he had resolved the situation, I wanted, I wanted you to have that relationship with him, but it could not come it could not be harmful to you in such a way that you came home crying. At that point, it was my job to do something. At that point, it was my job to get involved.
So I tried very hard to stay out of it. I tried very hard. And, and I thank you. I thank you, thank you, thank you for agreeing to be my child because I was able to learn so much about my ego, my strengths, my weaknesses by being your mom. You have been one of my greatest, greatest teachers in this life. You have shown me so much about myself. And your brother does also. Your brother does also. He shows me daily where I need to work. <laughs> daily where I need to work. And I guess this, this message is just to say thank you. Thank you for being my child. Your worth has never been. And maybe this is where I gave you the impression that I didn't care, maybe. Because your value and worth to me was never about your accomplishments. It was never about. I did, I did encourage you with your grades because I knew you could get good grades. I did encourage you to do the very best you could and give those things your attention which did serve you, and you know that because you thanked me for it later. Um, when it came time to look for colleges, you thanked me for doing that. And I'm sorry that I didn't, maybe I didn't praise you enough for your accomplishments. And I'm sorry about that because your accomplishments, your great accomplishments were no surprise to me. It never surprised me that you did well because I knew you would do well. I always knew you would do well. That is what is in you. So I'm sorry that I wasn't surprised or, you know, because I knew. But your worth and your value has always been that I knew you were the child of God more than you were my child. You are the child of God. I, I am just your human mother. I just... I, this body gave birth to your body. And so, yes, there have been times when I have tried to steer you in a certain direction that I thought was more beneficial for your body. Yes, I have. But ultimately, I knew it was your choice, and I even spoke that to you. I said, at the end of the day, I can't force you to do anything. I can only tell you my concerns. And then I have to let it go. I have to let it go. I speak these things on these videos because someday you may come to understand the things that I understand about truth about the upside down world, about the things that we can't see with our eyes but exist. And when you do, I may not be in body, I may not be in a body on this earth to talk with you about them. And so these videos are here and I hope that you find them.
when you need them. Even greater, I hope I'm still in a body somewhere on the earth plane. Or if not, that I, that I am able to communicate with you from wherever I am. Or you're able to receive communication from me wherever I am. Um, but nonetheless, I do what I can with what I have. And so... Thank you. And I trust that you are well wherever you are because I haven't heard from you. I still, for some reason, think that if something bad was happening, you would call on me. I love you. You are precious. You are amazing. You are incredible. I will always love you. But my love for you in this human form does not hold a candle, doesn't even hold an inkling of the love that you can receive and that is yours from our great creator. In peace and love, may you be blessed.